Hey guys, you are almost there. In my last video for TurboTax, I didn't actually get to finish the state filing because Minnesota didn't have their forms ready at that time. So I'm going back to dive into it and we're gonna look at how to finish state filing. Keep in mind that every single state's different, so you're not gonna find everything applies to you, but a lot of it should and a lot of the numbers, or most of them anyways, will carry over from your federal filing. So if you're at the point where you're gonna start state, Pay attention to this video and we're gonna walk right through all of it. Like, subscribe, and let's go. So I just logged in and I'm gonna go down to state taxes and review and edit. And if you remember in the first one I did, I wasn't able to do this because at the time Minnesota had not yet created their form. So I'm just gonna hit review and edit. And it's supposed to bring everything over from federal that I've already done. So you might be moving right from federal to state, but it's gonna be different for every state. I'm doing it specifically for Minnesota, but it should follow similar tabs and uh, process. So Minnesota, we're gonna hit continue. If you need to change your residency status, you can. I lived in Minnesota, so I'm gonna just say continue. It's saying all these different things. Do you need to make any of these adjustments? Go down the list and see if you do. These are not very common, so I'm gonna say no. Any adjustments, again, not as common, but if it does apply to you, you just click whichever one it is and you'll have to fill out either a number or an extra question for each one. I'm just gonna hit continue. Any other adjustments, same thing. You would click it and then you'd put in the amount. Non-taxable income, do you wanna check to see if you have any of this? So the K through 12 education credit, homestead credit, if you click yes, I want to, it brings you to the next one here. Otherwise, if you click no, let's skip this, it'll just take you to the next one. So you're gonna go through the credits for your state. So these are the credits for Minnesota. I've actually already gone through this just to take a quick look, but if I hit start or in this case revisit, it'll just say based on your entries, you don't qualify for this, okay? But if you click a different one, do you wanna see if you qualify? I'd hit yes. And then it goes through these questions to see if I get that credit. So whichever ones your state has, go through them and see what you qualify for in terms of credits. This is a little bit different than federal because for federal, everything applies to everyone and you get to answer all the same questions. For state, it's gonna be different varying on the state that you live in. So go through all of them and then just hit continue. Any other Minnesota credits, again, specific to Minnesota, I'm gonna hit none of the above, but you can see here, it's like credits for stillborn, stillborn uh, parents of stillborn children, credit for past military service, for teachers attaining a master's degree, any one of those. Um, if you do do it, then it would just take you to the questions to answer for that specific question. But I'm just going to say none of the above. This is a summary of your taxes and credits. This is what our taxable income was. This is what um, the resident income tax was for Minnesota. And then I didn't have any credits because I answered no to everything. I'm going to hit continue. Credit for military service in a combat zone, that was not us. We didn't mention it, so they won't go into it. Underpayment penalty, you might owe a penalty for underpayment of your state income tax if you filed a Minnesota return last year. Enter the tax shown on your 2020 Minnesota tax return. So you're gonna go to your Minnesota income tax return from last year, and you're gonna get that from form M1, which will be at the top of the page, and then line 17. I'm just going to put something in because I don't have it with me right now. If you get to this screen and this shows up, you need to pull your last tax return up, the 2021, and enter what's on line 17. So let's say I paid 2500 I'm going to hit continue. Based on your entries, we did not see an underpayment penalty for this year. And you can kind of see that number went down Let's say we paid 1500. This number still doesn't change because there's no penalty amount. I think they just chop off a regular chunk from that Minnesota taxes due. Do you wanna to contribute to the non-game wildlife fund? I'm gonna say no. State elections campaign fund, no. Are you registered to vote at your current address? Is this the first time you're filing from this address? I'm gonna say no, because I was here last year. And this is a summary of Minnesota's bottom line. So total taxes due 1,559. Obviously this is something I have to pay. It's not lit up in green. So I'm gonna have to pay that to the state and hit continue. 
do you want to work on estimated taxes for this coming year? If you want to, you can click yes, and it's going to go through all of this for you. Otherwise, hit no. This is just kind of looking ahead at 2022. In case you want to be really prepared for this coming year, I'm going to say no. It even says here, most people don't do this. File an extension. Do you need an extension? This will give you until October 17th of this year to file your return. It doesn't mean that you can pay any later. You still have to pay the taxes you owe by April 18th to avoid any penalties, but you can file later. I'm gonna skip the extension. And then it's gonna say, are there any other forms that you might need? An amended tax return, let's say this is a change, you had to make a change for some reason, you would have, you would need this. Or property tax refund, in the event that you pay property tax, or like it says here, you are a renter and you have a certificate of rent paid, that would also be you. So I'm just gonna say yes, we rented, property tax refund, you get to say here which one you are, whether you're a renter, homeowner, mobile home owner, nursing home, or adult foster care resident. I'm just gonna say renter. These all qualify you to receive it. Make sure everything makes sense. You're gonna hit yes. If you receive any of these assistance programs, put those amounts here. You would have gotten a form from those programs where you can enter it there. If it's nothing, if you didn't qualify for any of these, didn't receive any assistance, just leave it blank and hit continue. COVID related IRA distributions. This would be newer for this year. If you took anything out of your IRA for COVID, you would put that here. And then finally, the CRP or certificate of rent paid. You get this from your apartment complex, your landlord, and it'll just show you how much you paid towards your rental. You say yes. And then this is what it looks like. So this is the CRP. It's going to be your information here, where you lived, property information, number of units, and all of this is going to be on the CRP that you get from your landlord. This is the big amount here, um, your total rent and any re reductions that you had. You're then going to put their information here, whether it's a single person or a business. Again, all of it will be on that form that they give you. And you should be getting this in the next few days here before the end of January. When you're all done with that, just hit continue. Because I didn't actually put anything in, it's asking me, hey, do you wanna put stuff in? I'm gonna say no for now because I don't have anything with me. But you would put your CRP information in and then it should just say you're eligible for one. In this case, I'm not because I didn't put anything in there. And because my household income has to be less than this amount, 64000 I think in this example, it wasn't. So even if you paid rent the whole year and you, you made more than sixty-five, roughly $65,000, you're not going to get a credit for that in Minnesota anyways. Ready to review your state return. So it's just going to go through. You're going to go through all of them. It's a smart check. Says it looks good. Everything's ready to go. And this is important. Do you want to file federal and state together? I'm going to say yes. Or if you want to do just federal taxes, you can do that. You can do your state separately. It shows the status. So I'm going to say done with state. And then it's going to comb through everything. And you're going to have the option to file and then pick how you're going to pay. In my case here, or if in your case, you're getting money, how you want to receive your money. That is state taxes on TurboTax, a quick review for you guys. If you have any other questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn those notifications on. I will talk to you in the next video.